time they were moving it, I was like, oh my God, my refrigerator is going to end up in the pool. I thought this was gonna be like an easy project. Okay. You really gotta get down here with it. Sometimes I need like four minutes. guys welcome back to the vlog this is my new favorite spot doing my new favorite thing ever holding both my babies <laughs> this is like their new way of sitting Kinsley still gets her spot and he's all cuddled up on me oh, bliss spending a lot more time you know just with baby so we're picking up the vlog today because we've got things in the kitchen happening so exciting. I actually think that they're gonna be able to finish all the cabinetry things today. They've been coming like on and off all week since last Saturday and and all week. And I think I think we're gonna do it. I think it's it's really close. So then we'll wait for countertops and things like that. So I'm gonna be in and out of there filming all day for the next episode, which hopefully you guys will already see. And I'll put it on the screen if you did. I'm hoping that whatever they get done today can go in the next video. I'll put it and link it for you guys so that you can get caught up on where we're at. I have some house things that I'd love to tackle because I have spent the last five days vegging out with this little boy. So I've finally put on makeup and just, I wanna do some things today. Me and his dad will kind of like trade off, just giving him lots of love. It's like, I feel like I was like made for this. I obviously was, but just, this so much joy and so much life i'm just like over the moon these sounds of the kitchen being renovated soothe him he loves it i mean he did hear it nine months okay i have a few things i want to do like small home <laughs> projects small home tasks that I want to project. They actually just broke for lunch too in there. Um, they're just like doing lots of prepping work. People, different people, different tradesmen are kind of in and out today. Um, so no one's here right now. So I was like, let me let me start working on some, some stuff. So one thing I definitely wanted to do was update this handle. It's like broken, like look at this. And it's very old and just, it needed to be replaced. And since we were getting pretty handles going to the kitchen and one in the front, I was like, I might as well just do them all the same. So I got another handle for this to match. So we need to change it out because that wasn't part of our like kitchen renovation. Um, and changing out handles is relatively straightforward. I can't wait until they work on the outside too. They just have to paint. They've fixed all the stucco and done all of the work. It's just like that finish that final touch that they have to do and that will literally be the last thing but it's like i like don't like looking at the concrete you know the pieces back here i, I can see the end of our kitchen renovation which is really exciting it's like it's definitely going to be in the next like two weeks or so for their stuff you know we have a lot to do but like for their stuff i think like two two weeks <gasps> that could be insane. Okay, so I got these. If you didn't see the kitchen renovation video, I got these handles. They're from a brand called MTech. I got them from myknobs.com. And you can design them however you want. So I wanted a specific lever with a specific rosette. And I'll show you what those are. Nice. This is the lever portion, and then this is the rosette. And you can design them any way you want and in any color you want. I obviously wanted brass because brass is um, the metal element that we're putting in the kitchen. I picked this specific lever. I felt like it looked most like my inspiration for those doors. I looked for vintage handles, vintage French handles all over here in, in the States, obviously. I looked online, I looked at different places. Um, and I just could not find that elongated look that I really wanted. This was as close as I could get. And these are like four inches long. I think that they give me the look that I, that I wanted. I mean, it's definitely a little bit longer than the ones we've, we have on here. I think that they're really pretty. And I'm glad that we went with like a newer option because they're like super functional. You know, they're not like, like used <laughs> kind of thing. Like, look at this, like, this is so sad. I've actually already updated the other side of this handle. I stole 
stole one from another door that was inside just to have it work this well but it's like i think it, i could fix it obviously but it's so dingy and worn out it was just i wanted it to match anyways okay so we have to take this one off first different screws like flathead and Phillips and all sorts of different things. Okay, so I removed all of the old parts because everything's pretty rusted and just older. Just needed to be updated. And then the new one comes with everything we need. The strike plate for the inside of the door the new rosette obviously in the handle but also all the inner parts inner portions so this is the strike plate that one goes here of course this strike plate is smaller than the other one great i'm gonna do this part first to make sure i put the strike plate in the right spot base plastic alignment tool in borehole and install latch i knew that this looked different i was like why is this hole so small I guess for the other lock, it and the other handle, it didn't actually need like a two inch hole here. I have to make a hole. I don't think I have a hole maker here. Ugh. I thought this was gonna be like an easy project. <laughs> you guys, I forgot I had this. I don't remember what project I got this for. Hole makers come in handy. It's a whole, a whole kit. I don't even have this in Texas but I think it said I need two and an eighth. I have two inches, two and a quarter, and two and a half. <laughs> but maybe one will work. Okay, so we're gonna make a two inch hole. We're gonna start with two inch, then we can always go bigger if we need to. Two inches, large, two and three eighths of an inch from the edge, because that's the actual back set that I, that I bought. You could buy two different ones, so you kind of have to measure from the edge of your door to the center of the hole where you're gonna put it. If you have a new door, you can do whatever you want, but two and three eighths is most common, I feel like. It's tricky because there's already a hole, so it's hard to hold it in place while it cuts. Okay, I did it. That was just really tricky because there was already a hole and it was bigger than my bit. So I didn't have anything to stabilize what the new hole was going to be. Um, so if you're doing it with a with a new door, obviously you have something like solid, like a little hole that fits your bit and then you can make the hole. But like that one was hard. I had to just kind of get it going. I hope we did it. I mean, I aligned it perfectly with that. So I'm hoping that I got it in the right spot. Let's see. Sometimes I need like four hands <laughs> to cut the screws. Perfect. Okay. so much better like so much better i just need to fix the door right here there's like some like cracking in the paint i don't know maybe i'll do a little refresh on it and kind of like fix up the door just gets used a lot so it, the paint gets banged up you know what i mean okay project one is done project two a few weeks ago if you guys remember i went to world market and spontaneously <laughs> was looking for something completely different for some photos I was taking, but I ended up buying a new pole and a canopy because it was really pretty. And we needed another one for right here, not over there by the pool area, but right here. And I wanted them to match. So I got two of the canopies thinking that they would fit our existing kind of umbrella that we had, but they didn't. So we're gonna move that umbrella 
to the front patio and I got another one to go here, but I waited so long that, and I know better than to do that. Um, things like that, like summer things at World Market sell out pretty fast in store. And I did make it, obviously I was nine months pregnant and about to have a baby and I didn't make it back over there. It was like a whole thing. So by the time I checked the stock in store, they were sold out of the umbrella and also the stand itself, like the weighted stand. So I had to order them online. So they've taken a little bit to get here, but they got here. Now we have two umbrellas because this area, like these two chairs, we sit in a lot. These are right off of the kitchen. So once the kitchen is done, and we can have an umbrella we can sit out here and have our coffee we did that this morning with the baby the baby ate we had our coffee it was like really nice because it's we're still really cool in the mornings here so i got the pieces so we just need to put them together hi kids This one was pretty too because it had like a basket weave on it. it had like a little more character and design to it. was well i know for sure back here in the backyard we're going to be doing like a lot of cleanup like post renovation uh so we want to power wash all of this back here you know just from like all the stuff that's been happening like we did all of the brickwork here uh to never have a drainage problem again when it rains in that january february time like when our house flooded that was really bad so we had them you know redo the brick area so that it doesn't collect water and it doesn't pour into our house so that is like that made a lot of dust and it's new brick and old brick and stuff and i want to power wash all of that i also want to clean all of the white parts around the pool like all of these and then all of that behind the pool on that side when it rains it tends to just like run dirt down the the painted cinder block is is really what it was what it is and you can see a lot of it because it's pure white but it's a good thing that it's white and i want it to stay white because it helps to bounce the light in the morning because the morning sun comes up on that side of the house and then once the sun gets to this side of the house it's behind the trees so in the morning up until probably about two o'clock in the afternoon the sun bounces off of these white walls and into the house so it brightens our living room that we spend a lot of time in in the back of the house so they have to stay white it's very functional <laughs> like it, it like works really well but you can see a lot of dirt so i want to like clean them up and see if they need to be repainted i see some spots that kind of do like on this side i also want to do a lot of trimming work like grooming back here a lot of the trees are getting overgrown i actually ordered a extension hedge trimmer kind of looks like a mini chainsaw and we're going to be like shaping the, the trees exactly how I want them. Um, I know it's something that I can tell my gardener to do and I think we could pay a little more for it, but like, I like doing that stuff like that, you know? So, and I'll get exactly how I want it. So this, this tree needs some shaping. I want it to look like more like bald because I think by cutting them back and shaping them all around the pool area, it's gonna help minimize the amount of leaves and pollen and stuff that goes into the pool area. So it's gonna, we have a lot to do. <laughs> We have, a, we have a lot to work on. I mean, houses are living, breathing things that always need attention and care. Did I show you guys my apples? I don't, Kate and I were out here one day and I was like talking to him about the garden and, and everything. And I was like showing him all my plants. 
and all the things that we're going to be able to harvest together, like the lemons and things, I found apples. Let me show you. I honestly couldn't believe it because they have not bloomed before. Actually, quite a few things have bloomed this year that didn't bloom last year. I have two avocados growing on the front avocado tree in next to the rose garden. And then I have apples. Look at that. I have, I think, four apples on this tree. One, two, three. Yeah, four. Look at that. Can you believe it? I did not know that this is an, was an apple. I actually thought it was some kind of dogwood situation because of the white flowers that bloomed first. No, it was just the white flowers on the fruit tree. I couldn't believe it. But I see, I have to do a lot of like cleanup work back here, like all this. Mm. So I think the guys are back. They're working kind of like out on the patio and coming inside. Uh, so I'm gonna let them do their thing and be on call for them and be with the baby, feed the baby. And then I have a few things that I'd like to do in there once they're done. Maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. Excuse my appearance. This is just how, what we're working with today. It has been so chaotic today. <laughs> I was editing my main channel video today so you guys could see the last renovation video. There were so many people in and out of here all day from finishers to the countertop guys to um, the electricians came by to see what they needed to do and assess when they were all kind of on top of each other. So they're kind of coming back and so much so i was doing that and then i was doing baby obviously and then uh, editing today has been chaotic so this i woke up like this and now it's like 6 p.m <laughs> um i'm wondering if some of these um spots on my clothes are paint residue from like dust and stuff in here or baby spit up <laughs> we don't know this is a no judgment zone I have a refrigerator in the middle of our kitchen and it has been here for like two weeks now or so. The our refrigerator sat in our driveway for like three weeks. Luckily it didn't rain. So I have a story time while we actually work on getting this um, refrigerator installed. This is the same refrigerator that we have at the cottage but the newer version. I think they've done some updates to it. Um, but it's the same one. So I've already installed this refrigerator once. So I'm gonna <laughs> install this refrigerator again. That's okay. I was gonna get the install with ordering it, but they didn't offer it. I'm not sure why. I'm, I don't know. And since I'd already done it, I was like, we're gonna save the money. Um, I'm just doing the installation of the box or the refrigerator box itself. The plumber will take care of doing the line, the water line for the ice maker. Um, do I think it's hard? No. Do I think I can do it? Yes. The way that this refrigerator goes in and is installed, so like the refrigerator will sit like here, obviously, in this box, but the water line and the electrical outlet has to be external from that, like outside of it, because the refrigerator is so built in. So it has to be on the outside. So it's actually going into this cabinet here. So this is this is gonna be the refrigerator box, right? And then over here in the cabinet, we just can remove a drawer and access the water and the electrical for the refrigerator. Um, the other one, this is the same refrigerator, but the other one didn't call for that. That may be a newer update or a newer thing that they want that Mila wants you to start doing, I don't know, or this specific fridge. I think I got the same one. I mean, who knows? So I, you know, did some light reading the other night while taking care of baby and I read the installation manual again, just to refresh my memory and to make sure that the box is the right size and all of the above. Um, we just need to install some anti-tip brackets and then slide the refrigerator in place. It's on rollers. It was like the last one so it's pretty easy to move um it has it, it will tip and i did tip the other one um by opening the door so they're all closed and everything so this refrigerator sat in our driveway because it got delivered and the guy came to deliver it and i saw him and he was an older gentleman and he didn't move very fast up the driveway and i was like 
this refrigerator is like 400 pounds. I hope he's not the one that's going to be moving it because I know, like, and I was pregnant. I was like, I know I'm not moving it and I know I don't want Romeo to get hurt so he's not moving it and this guy, he's struggling to get up the driveway to even see where it's supposed to go. So I was worried. Rightfully so because then they could not get the refrigerator into the kitchen and Another guy was with him, but he just couldn't do it on his own. 400 pounds, you guys. So they just, they tried and attempted and Romeo was gonna help them, but it was just, uh, they needed a strategy. It wasn't so much the weight issue. It was like, they needed a, a clear thought process when it came to like getting this refrigerator in because it's quite tall. I mean, this refrigerator is 84 inches tall. You know, so it's taller than the average refrigerator, which is something that we liked about this refrigerator, but none of our doors are this tall. <laughs> um, so it it was it was tricky. So what they ended up having to do is leave it. They left the refrigerator in our driveway and we just like locked, I mean, obviously our, our property is really secure. So it's like, it wasn't a big deal. Uh, for that reason but i was worried about it like maybe raining you know or something falling i don't know and so i didn't sign for it or nothing i'm like i do not take responsibility for this until it gets into place so it, it was fine so they came back they were supposed to come back on the following wednesday did not come back uh no no show so we kept trying to coordinate and it was like three weeks later when they finally could come and they came with um like more people but one of them had the strategic mind. He was like, all right, this is how we're gonna do this. This is how, so they had to go through the rose garden. They couldn't come into this part of the kitchen anymore because then we had cabinetry. It was supposed to come before we had the cabinetry so they could get it in the front door. Oh, so then they had to reevaluate. So they had to go through the rose garden, around, through, and up the steps next to the pool and through the pool doors. Whole time they were moving it, I was like, oh my God, my refrigerator is going to end up in the pool. That's what I thought. Like that's how tricky it was for them to like get it in and it's so heavy. I was stressed watching them do it, having to bend it down and move it down. And then it's like, is it gonna get damaged? Are we gonna damage something? Please don't damage my new doors. It was a whole full on stressful situation. And then they got it in and I bought them lunch because I was like, you guys are so good. <laughs> like, I'm like, this is phenomenal. Like, I can't believe you got it in. It will never leave. Like, it's never leaving. I hope it never gives out. I hope it never gives out because I don't know how we get it out. That was my story. So now we're gonna install it. We have like an hour before we lose daylight in here because we don't have electricity yet. Um, but it's relatively straightforward. I've already cleaned the area and measured to double check that the measurement is good. So I'm going to install the anti-tip brackets first and then Romeo and I are gonna slide it into place. We are going into a stud with these. Yeah, we got this. I mean, it's a roller, so this is the front. Yeah. So we have to turn it completely around uh -huh. and then guide it close. Once we get close to it, but it's not in, uh -huh. we'll make sure it's aligned. I don't want to hit or mess up the, the thing. Okay. So okay. if you hold it stationary, yep. I'll swing it. Yep, 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 good. Oh, wow, it really is on roller. Yeah, it really is on roller. Like, it's just, we have brick floors. <laughs> so it's like bumpy, huh? Yeah. This thing can't really fall, right? Or... Well, it'll tip if the doors are open. But yeah, it could fall. Where is the plug? I have all the pieces that came with it. We can't function without a plug. Where is the plug, you guys? Okay, I hope I found it and not the one for the hood. If they're the same, I'll figure out what to do with the hood, but what, where? They're both the same brand, so it's hard to tell. Let me see. Oh yeah. It's right. Unless the hood has the exact same one. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. 
What the heck? Back in business. I got worried there for a second. Kate has to eat again? <laughs> Feed the baby. Feed the baby. Ooh, it's going to be a tight fit. But with me doing that, I'm more patient and I'm taking it slow. Okay. You know, if we didn't have brick floors, this would have been a lot easier. Because at the cottage, it was like super easy. <laughs> but I'm hitting like the grout between the bricks. It's definitely getting darker. Okay, our cabinet doors, now that I've got it like in just to the edge, now I have to, I'm, I'm pretty sure that our cabinet doors are three quarters of an inch thick. Um, but these guides, these red guides that are right here, help you to determine how far in you need to put the refrigerator in order to accommodate for your cabinet doors because this is a built-in fridge. So we're going to the first mark. Right there, and it'll help guide us. Well, we got it into place. We have a lot more like attaching to do, but never underestimate yourselves, ladies. Even three weeks postpartum, don't underestimate yourself. Okay, you guys, we're back in the kitchen. I got it into place, and they were able to work on things without the refrigerator being in the center of the room. They have worked so much in here. I can't wait for you guys to see the next episode. Oh, I'm so excited. So they've been making a lot of progress. So you're only gonna be facing this way. So you don't, you don't see too much. Uh, so we have to finish installing this fridge. Now it's only in here like how we did it a few nights ago with the anti-tip brackets. So it's much safer where it's at than sitting in the middle of the room for sure. Cause just for like safety for the guys that are working, safety for us and also safety for the fridge. I don't want the fridge to fall over. But luckily there wasn't too much um, back and forth with like guys in here before I was able to get the like the thumbs up, like, okay, the cabinetry is good. You can go ahead and install it kind of thing. So we just have a few things left to do. I know for a fact, all of these like brads, like brackets here need to be screwed in and we need to make sure that it is perfectly square and level and the perfect dimension um, and space is left for the cabinet doors. That's a biggie, because we want it to be super flush. And then we wait for the cabinet doors to be stained and installed, and then I can put the covers. Um, they're like plastic covers, like that really finish it off and like make it super like polished on the edges, and those go on last. So we're kind of doing this in stage. This install is going in stages for sure. Okay, I remember doing this part at the cottage and I was like, scared to do it. I had to pop off the grill. So you have to use two flatheads to do it. And it wasn't an enjoyable experience the first time around. It's like, cause you can't see where the clips are. So I feel like I got lucky the, the last time. Ugh. See, I don't like this part. You really gotta get down here with it. <laughs> I can see them once I get down here. Oh, it took like five more tools, but I got it. So by removing it, I can access the feet and level the feet. To do that, I use a T20 screwdriver. I don't think it's called a screwdriver, but T20, it looks like a little star. <laughs> the, si the exact size. I actually use, you'll use this a lot. Like if you do home projects and you build things or you're working with like appliances and stuff, they use this T20 star thing a lot. Let's see if we finally did it. It was like a game we had to play with the feet. Oh, that's so level. That's wonderful. Okay. It was definitely harder too because we have brick floors and they're not level. I, I mean, they're level, but they're they're rocky, you know? So if one foot fell into where um, more of the lower part of the brick was, or the grout line, you know, it's gonna throw off the balance. So we kind of had to play a game with the four feet, moving them until we got these red pieces aligned with the face of this box and also level. It's perfect now. Romeo had to come and watch the watch the red things as I was like like moving the screws and stuff so to move it. All right, we did it. Okay, so now in order to keep them perfectly level and perfectly in place, the screws go along the top. So. 
that's what I need to do now. See, these have the T20 star a little bit. You use those a lot. I, I found that I use them a lot. And I found that I lose the bit to my drill for the T20 a lot. I never have a complete set of drill bits. I lose things. Uh. I lose bits, I drop them and oh sweet honey. <laughs> Those little cries. Now we're to this stage. We need the cabinet doors. You but I can take off these bracket things because the guides are perfect. They're perfectly aligned. <gasps> so good. And I can reassemble the grill now that the feet are all like balanced and level. Thank you.